As you may have already guessed, the theme of our service today is the wisdom of ancient trees. So we're going to begin by learning a little bit more about some of the world's most ancient trees that live right here in our region. We have a YouTube video. Um, Barb's going to be bringing that up. Please be patient with us as we uh, negotiate the technology, which is not always as friendly as we would like. The Black River, it's not like other rivers. It has a, a whole personality of its own. You just feel like you're in an ancient place. When I paddle this river, I often wonder, what are these trees saying? These trees have been here so long. It's something that you don't experience anywhere else. You don't get near something that old or that something that's been that significant in, in your whole life. And when you come in here, you get that timeline and you feel it. We're here in what is really one of the greatest natural areas left in eastern North America, Black River, North Carolina. We're in the heart of the Three Sisters area, which is a vast area of ancient bald cypress trees, many over a thousand years old, and some over two thousand years old that were alive during the time of Christ and even older. We studied bald cypress Taxodium disticum, the southern swamp cypress throughout its native range in Latin America and the United States. This is the best stand we've ever found. We don't harm the trees, we take a small core sample from bark to pith, that is from the outside towards the center of the tree, and it brings out a pencil-sized core sample that can be mounted and finely polished. And under the microscope, we study the annual growth rings with dendrochronology, the most accurate and precise dating method in geochronology. And we take hundreds of these cores from hundreds of trees at a given location. And then we cross-synchronize the patterns of wide and narrow rings going back into prehistory. It's possible to do that because climate modulates tree growth. So in wet years, the trees grow well. In drought years, they grow poorly, even in these frequently flooded cypress swamps. If we're going to go to here, we, we should put in first blood. Yeah. In the late 80s, early 90s, when the Nature Conservancy began the acquisition of their Black River Preserve here in southeastern North Carolina, I thought the problem was solved. But I had the opportunity to return to Black River in 2011 to areas I had never seen before. When was the last time you went to your favorite old growth forest and found out that it was 10 times larger than you had previously realized? It's a blessing and a curse because, wow, it's way bigger than we realize and it's not all conserved. We're trying to help raise awareness and we've established this ancient bald cypress consortium for research, education, and conservation. Well, honestly, I think it's right around 2,000 years old based on its massive base all these pearls growing on it, its external weathering features, you know, the fact that its canopy has been blown out long ago by some succession of land falling hurricanes. Really remarkable. It's certainly, certainly a valuable tree. Last year we sampled extensively in the Three Sisters area. We found two trees, Denver chronologically dated at more than 2,000 years old. The first one has an inner ring date of 70 BC, and the second one has an inner ring date of 605 BC, making that individual at least 2,624 years old, which is by far the oldest living tree ever found in eastern North America. 
For sure, it's one of the oldest living trees on Earth. It's a remarkable discovery. It's also a wonder that an organism can live this long. And when you add to that wonder the fact that the annual rains record the history of the environment, it's a tremendous paleoclimate record. <laughs> The natural world has been vastly reduced, and there's only a little left. We need places like this. We need to be able to get out into nature. It does us more good than you can imagine. The Nature Conservancy has been able to preserve some of these outstanding old growth forests and these opportunities still exist. We really still have the chance to make a serious difference in the preservation of the natural world. While we're swapping um, high-tech video sources, I brought a show and tell this morning. I wanted to tell you about this before I begin my homily. This is a um, fragment from a buried tree from that very spot in the Black River. It was harvested sustainably by one of our river guides. Um, he was kind enough to cut what's called a cookie from that um, tree. And just so you can appreciate the slow growth of these trees, here, in the span of my fingers, is 250 years, at least, of, of growth. The entire history of the United States since the Revolution would occur in that small amount. So you can understand how these big trees are so very, very old. I'm going to leave that up front if anybody wants to um, see it after the service. Thanks, Barb. So um, I'm going to show two slides during the homily. Uh, the one on the um, right um, is the very spot where um, these ancient trees live. It's a sanctuary beyond, beyond belief, a little opening where you're just surrounded by these ancient giants. And uh, as you'll see, we were there uh, last Tuesday. This um, is a tree you're going to hear a lot about this morning, a friend of mine. Okay, I visited BLK 227 last Tuesday, this past Tuesday, for an interview. BLK 227 is a bald cypress tree, Taxodium disticum for you botanists, in the Three Sisters Swamp section of the Black River, a bit west of Burgaw, North Carolina. BLK 227 was so named by Dr. David Staley who runs the Tree Ring Laboratory in the Department of Geosciences at the University of Arkansas in Fayetteville. You just met Dr. Staley in the preceding video. Well, BLK-227 is pretty special. <clears throat> it holds the current world record for documented age of any bald cypress tree, 2,629 years old this year. And that, by the way, is a minimum age, because as you saw, Dr. Staley had to core BLK-227 at a height of 10 feet above the swamp floor. 
It is unknown how long it takes for a bald cypress seedling to reach 10 feet in height. So 2,629 years old is a minimum age. Let that soak in. That's 629 years before the Common Era, also known to Christians as B.C. or before Christ. BLK 227's age firmly establishes bald cypress, the species, as the oldest wetland tree species on planet Earth, and number five, five, on the worldwide list of the oldest known continuously living sexually reproducing non-clonal tree species based on dendrochronology, which as you heard, is the scientific study of tree, ring, tree rings. The last Tuesday was a picture perfect spring day. I and my 15 companions had paddled downstream for a couple of hours to meet BLK 227, and we now rested comfortably um, in our brightly colored kayaks in BLK 227 shade and among their massive knees, talking quietly amongst ourselves and eating lunch. I introduced myself to BLK 227. Hi, I'm Dr. Thomas Wentworth, but you can call me Tom. I'm a male homo sapiens, and my pronouns are he, him, and his. I was born in the year 1948 in the common era, so I'll celebrate my 75th birthday later this year. I am pleased to be in the presence of such an extraordinarily ancient being. And I have a few questions for you. ELK 227 responded, Greetings, Tom. Nice to meet you, too. I see you come in peace because you carry no cutting tools or other weapons to harm me or my friends in this community. My real name would be unintelligible to you, so 227 will have to suffice. My pronouns are they, them, and theirs, because I produce male and female cones each year, which in turn produce pollen and fertilize seeds. So Tom, you said you had some questions for me. Your time is more limited than mine, so <laughs> please tell me what you wanted to discuss. I then told 227 that my goal was to get their takes on some selected topics for an Earth Day church service I would be leading today at Unitarian Coastal Fellowship. And I suggested that we begin with beloved community. 227 replied, ah, yes, beloved community, one of my favorite topics. It's hard to underestimate the value of community, whether it be my fellow bald cypress trees or any of the other residents of this ecosystem. Although I did have to compete for space and light with my peers when I was young, today I value the intact forest canopy that protects this entire stand from the ravages of hurricanes, and I have seen hundreds of them in my lifetime. Our interlocking roots and knees anchor the stand in our wetland soils and help us persist during periodic floods. Like other members of my plant family, I partner with fungi that colonize my roots, facilitating the uptake of scarce nutrients from this mucky, acidic, nutrient-deficient soil. My benefits to other members of this ecosystem are many. Eagles and ospreys have nested in my upper limbs, and generations of owls and wood ducks have found shelter and nest sites in my gnarly trunk. Squirrels feed on my seeds, and fish spawn among my roots. Spanish moss thrives among my branches. You may already know that intact swampland bald cypress stands are of immense value to Homo sapiens, too. Such stands buffer and slow floodwaters, helping to mitigate downstream flooding during periods of um, high rainfall. And they release water slowly to, main surface to maintain surface flow during dry periods. Bald cypress swamps trap sediments, improving water quality for both humans and wildlife who live downstream. By sequestering carbon, in living and dead wood, we help reduce the accumulation of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. As we take up 
carbon dioxide to produce wood leaves and reproductive tissues, we also maintain the atmosphere's oxygen content, something that oxygen consuming animals like yourself must surely appreciate. My kind have provided your species with rot resistant wood for building homes and boats. In short, you, my friend, and I are part of an interdependent web. We give and we receive. <laughs> yes, together we persist, and alone we most certainly would perish. I reflected on this wisdom for quite a while, and then I said, I belong to the Unitarian Universalist Church, a faith that values lifespan sexual education. Indeed, we have partnered with the United Church of Christ to create Our Whole Lives, a program that helps participants of all life stages make informed and responsible decisions about their relationships, sexual health, and behavior. Thus, I'm sure my friends would be curious about your sex life. <laughs> 227 replied, I've enjoyed a healthy sex life although you might consider bald cypress sex a bit promiscuous by your standards. Each spring, I and other bald cypress throughout the United States and Mexico produce male cones that shed massive amounts of pollen, much like pines. In this way, I may reach sex partners tens or even hundreds of miles away under the right conditions of wind and weather. I also produce female cones containing eggs that are fertilized by the male gametes and pollen reaching me. My female cones thus sample the gene pool of bald cypress in a vast area, allowing me to stay in touch, if you will, with a much wider population. Mature female cones containing seeds may float long distances during flood events. During Hurricane Florence, for example, my young even traveled to nearby watersheds before settling down to germinate and grow. Not bad for a plant that can spend millennia growing in the same spot. I asked 227 for their take on ecology. They replied, my needs are pretty simple. Like every organism on the planet, I must keep an ecological perspective if I am to survive. This is doubly important because my kind live outside with no shelter and can persist in the same spot for thousands of years. Just like you, I have an absolute need for a reliable supply of clean air and water. Although I make my own food from air, water, and sunlight, I need small amounts of essential nutrients to survive, and within reasonable limits, I can tough it out during hurricanes, floods, and droughts. This led me to ask 227 about their environmental concerns. They replied, frankly, Tom, I am deeply worried about the future. For many millennia, you humans took small amounts of wood and other natural products from swamp forests for medicine, construction of homes, and boat building. The harvest was sustainable and always done with the greatest of respect and gratitude for this forest and its inhabitants. Then about 400 years ago, all this began to change. The harvest accelerated, aided by huge machines and other technology. This rapacious harvest occurred without respect for nature and with no view to long-term sustainability. Did you know that according to my friend Dr. Staley, less than 1% of bald cypress forests have survived the recent era of heavy logging? The vast post-glacial bald cypress forests of eastern North America are mostly gone, save for a couple of relictual stands. The Three Sisters Stand, uh, Three Sisters Swamp, where we are today, and other old growth stands along this stretch of the Black River in North Carolina represent one of the two largest intact old growth bald cypress swamps remaining on planet Earth. Thanks to the intervention of environmentalists, particularly the Nature Conservancy, there is now hope that the Black River Swamp forests will be preserved forever. I am thankful that I have been spared the fate of becoming cypress mulch in somebody's garden. 
227 continued. Sadly, though, there are larger changes that even the mighty nature conservancy cannot control. Excessive loading of sediments, nutrients, and um, toxic pollutants entering the watershed upstream of us threaten the ecological integrity of this swamp. My tree rings document a continuous record of climate, climatic events over nearly three millennia. I can tell you that beginning with your so-called industrial revolution, the climate began changing. Slowly at first and now faster than previously experienced at any time in my record. Atmospheric carbon is well on its way to doubling by the end of this century, triggering catastrophic warming and other climate changes that spell trouble for both of us. I will remind you that this Three Sisters Cove is only two meters above mean sea level, about the height of a tall Homo sapiens. The lower reaches of the Black River are already tidal, and it won't take much sea level increase to drive intermittent pulses of salt water into this swamp. And I can assure you, Tom, that a steady diet of seawater would kill me as soon as it would kill you. At that point, despite the pleasantly warm air and sunlight sparkling on the water, I was feeling darkly glum. My colleagues were putting away the remnants of their lunches and preparing for the rest of our downstream paddle. I told 227 that I had to leave soon, and I asked them if they had any words of hope that I could share with my friends on Earth Day weekend. 227 reflected for a moment and said, please tell them this, you and I, Tom, are extraordinary. I am extraordinary because I am among the oldest of a rapidly, rapidly dwindling number of my kind, and I live in one of the last remaining intact habitats that support my community and ecosystem. You and your kind are extraordinary because within just a few millennia, less than a blink of an eye in Earth's history, you have become the dominant species on the planet, unleashing destructive forces that threaten to destroy much of Earth's life and its life support system. Your vision and mission must be this. Find a way to return the two of us and the other members of our two amazing species from extraordinary to ordinary. Making me ordinary would mean that once again bald cypress swamps filled with ancient trees would return to the 99% of our former range that existed until just a few hundred years ago. Making you ordinary, Tom, would mean that Homo sapiens would return to a sustainable population peacefully contributing to the incredible beauty of this planet as a cooperative and coexisting player among the millions of plants, animals, and microorganisms that exist here and nowhere else in this vast, unforgiving universe. I thanked 227 for taking time to speak with me, and I promised to carry their message forward. I fist bumped their ancient trunk and pushed my kayak away and downstream. 227's parting words continued to ring in my ears, though. Goodbye, Tom. Please visit again soon and do what you can to make the extraordinary ordinary. Happy Earth Day weekend, my friends. I have brought the wisdom of the ancient forest to you today, as I promised 227. Let us endeavor to carry out their request to make the extraordinary ordinary once again. Amen and blessed be. Our prayer on this.